is Ralph from Happy Dog Training and welcome to another episode of Dog Talk. Today we're going to talk about ignorance, nonsense and stupidity. Oh, what a great title that is. So what do I mean by that? So first we could probably make this an ongoing series because I'm sure there's going to be many things coming up um, that we could um, fold into these categories. But there are three specific things that I've come across in the last, I would say, four or five months that just absolutely blow my mind. And those I want to talk about in this episode. So let's start with number one. First thing that happened is a client that became a client of mine with his German Shepherd, Max. And before he hired me, he had taken his dog back to the breeder where he got him from because the breeder also did some training. And Max is a very headstrong dog. He is a very focused dog, very determined. Um, he doesn't give up easily. He's smart. And he's a great dog. He's a great German Shepherd. But he's not the easiest animal to train and not the easiest animal to shape up and uh, live with. So he went back to the breeder where he came from. And here is what that guy did. That is just mind-boggling to me. So he went at that dog and pushed him into the ground, on the ground, basically attacking him. I don't know exact, well, exactly how he pushed him on the ground. But then Max didn't take that well and acted quite aggressively toward him and barked him and probably tried to bite him. Well, duh. Obviously, why would you do such a thing? Why would you come at a dog that you basically have no relationship with because he's been away from this guy for like a long time and he only knew him when he was like, I don't know, seven weeks old and push him in the ground and then go, see, your dog is aggressive. Your dog needs to be really handled tough. That, that is literally what he said to him. He needs to be handled in a tough way. And it's just mind blowing to me that somebody would do that to a dog and expect there to be any other reaction than an aggressive backlash. What else is the dog supposed to do? He is all of a sudden being attacked by this guy who is basically a stranger, and of course he's going to defend himself. What else would he be doing? It makes absolutely no sense to expect a different result and outcome, and Max is not an aggressive dog at all. He's not aggressive. He is headstrong, he is stubborn, he is smart, but he's not aggressive. I had him with me for training, and he's an awesome dog. Uh, just some videos on our training channel. I'll, 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 maybe I'll link one in the show notes. And great dog, but it took a while. So it was with him. He's, as I said, he's smart, and he would just not do it the way I wanted him to because he didn't want to. Right? And it takes determination on part of the trainer to get the message across and just be patient and re-explain and make sure it understands there's no alternative. No, it's not going to work any differently. You just have to be patient with the dog and calm and not, not push him into the ground and basically attack him. So, and this is not the first time I've heard this. This is just the most recent thing. And this, this is the, this is what you get from these kinds of macho trainers or these military police dog trainers who now ventured into the pet world and think they just can overpower animals with their force. Um, not that that's good training in the military and police world. It's not. But it's more common there. So when you have these guys leave the force and then venture out and become pet dog trainers and think the dogs that they're going to encounter in the pet world have the same kind of temperament and, and toughness than the, the purpose-bred dogs they encounter at work, that usually doesn't work out well. So, But it's that kind of mentality that is uh, pretty baffling. So it was a very un, uh, unsurprising result. Um, just a very baffling behavior by a human who should really know better. So that was the first one. Uh, falls in all three categories right there. Absolutely stupid. Why would you do such a thing? That is just dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Okay. So number two. Um, and this is uh, recently I took one of the service dog puppies that we have in training. Actually not was even when the first dog first came, it was our very first vet visit, uh, a week or two after he came here, got uh, his second his second shot for parvo and distemper, puppy shot. And 
the vet wanted to uh, deworm him. And the dog has no parasites. So I asked him, why are we deworming a dog without A, first testing if there are parasites, and B, why are we deworming a dog if there's no indication that he has parasites? What's the point of that? Deworming is for removing parasites. So why deworming? And the answer was, well, the dog is too young for the warm preventatives. Okay, but there are FDA warnings against the warm preventatives and some of the tick and flea medications that are out there on the market these days. So it's not that they're all that safe. Um, but just because we can't give them a medication that is probably questionable, also there's other alternatives that you should definitely, I mean, you should definitely protect your dogs against parasites. I'm not saying you shouldn't. But there, there have been FDA warnings against some of those tick, flea, and parasite products. That's also a fact. And um, to deworm a dog that has no worms is crazy to me. Maybe that's just me, but I think that's insane. I want to deworm a dog who has worms. I don't want to deworm a dog who doesn't. Just because, oh, he may. That's ridiculous. Why would you do such a thing? Why has that become the norm? And let's be clear, that's the norm. The vet is not going rogue. The vet is following standard basic operating procedure. That is what veterinarians these days do. Let's deworm everybody. And I just cannot wrap my head around why I would deworm a dog without parasites. If he has parasites, of course, of course, by all means, yes, give the medication, no question, right? But if he doesn't have any, and it's not even that he wanted to do a stool sample first to see if there are parasites. No, that would at least be reasonable. Let's say if the dog has parasites, let's run a stool test. If he does, he's a puppy, maybe he does. Huh? Okay, that's a fair approach. We could say we do or do not want to run this test. There's no indication there's parasites. Maybe we don't need to do that. But at least it's a reasonable approach to test first if it's necessary. But to just give the medication without any indication that it's necessary and without any test if it's necessary or not, again, that is crazy to me. So, and this is not, this is normal operating procedure. This is the normal veterinary protocol. So this is something that has become the norm that everybody just goes with and accepts. That makes absolutely no sense if you pause for a moment and think about it. Why would you do that without taking a parasite test first? Test for parasites. Go from there. If he doesn't have any, don't. If he does, go ahead. That would be the way to go in my in my understanding of things. But um, okay. So that's the second one. Now let's get to number three. This is my current favorite. And it is a level of, of ignorance and stupidity that could really only come from this person. So I have a little printout. Yeah, I have to read this because I cannot remember any of this. This is just... Um, it's lunacy. It's just flat out lunacy. So this has exist existed since the 1990s, but I've never really paid attention to it. But recently, somebody suggested that as a, as a as, as an operating procedure, and uh, I had to download it because it's free. You can find it. I'll put a link. And yeah, so this is the called the relaxation protocol by Carrot Overall who has absolutely no qualification to speak about dog training whatsoever, but that's a different conversation. So this is a relaxation protocol. I'm going to read the 14-day protocol. I'm going to read the steps of day one. I'm just going to read those, and then we're going to have a little talk about this, because this is... Wow. Okay. So, day one. Sit for five seconds. Sit for 10 seconds. Sit while you take one step back and return. Sit while you take two steps back and return. Sit for 10 seconds. Sit while you take one step back and return. Sit while you take one step back and return. Sit for 10 seconds. Sit while you take two steps back and return. Sit while you take two steps back and return. Sit for 15 seconds. Sit while you take two steps back and return. Sit while you clap your hands softly once. Sit while you take three steps back and return. Sit while you count out loud to 10. Sit while you clap your hands softly once. Sit while you count out loud to 20. Sit while you take three steps to the right and return. Sit 
while you clap your hands softly twice, sit for three seconds, sit for five seconds, sit while you take one step back to return, sit while you take three st uh, sit for three seconds, sit for ten seconds, sit for five seconds, sit for three seconds. That's day one of Karen Overall's relaxation protocol. So, first of all, this is not a relaxation protocol. It's an obedience routine for sit. A relaxation protocol would actually relax a dog. A relaxation protocol leads to relaxation, not to some forced body position. There is a difference between a dog lying down on their own because they're relaxed and a dog lying down because I gave him a down command and he may or may not be relaxed. Has absolutely no influence on that whatsoever. Now, the idea of this nonsense is that if you put a dog in the body position, that the emotional state will follow. And it's not that there couldn't be a validity to that line of thinking. To some degree, there is. But this is not a way to accomplish relaxation in a dog. This does apply to people to some extent. There are some studies on um, being confident or less confident based on body positions that you assume before and after. But for dogs to say that you're going to become relaxed doing this crap, that is a ludicrous proposition. It's nothing to do with relaxation. If you wanted to do an axle relaxation protocol, like one that really results in a dog relaxing, an example that would be much better would be the posture facilitated relaxation from Stephen Lindsay. And that is where you basically massage a dog to relax them and relax them and relax them until they end up falling to their side and fall asleep. And that is a protocol that will lead to actual relaxation. This obedience routine will not. And only a complete idiot would think that it will, which is not a surprise given who wrote it. So when you do something like this, the second point, this is literally treating a dog like the dog is a complete moron. If you do this to a dog, I would even go so far as to call it animal abuse because that is treating a dog like the dog is dumb as a brick. And dogs are not. Dogs are smart. That is disrespectful to a dog to do this. This is an absolute disgrace to treat an animal this way and expect them to come out well on the other side. It is demeaning. You do not train sit in this fashion if you have any idea how to train a sit or a down or anything. This is idiotic. And anyone who follows concept like this has no business touching dogs. So um, if you want to know current overall this, you can look her up. She uh, publishes all kinds of studies and has all kinds of opinions, one more unqualified than the next. But that, that's a topic for another day. Um, this woman, but this relaxation protocol. So if anyone ever presents the Karen overall relaxation protocol to you as something you should be doing with your dog, you should ask some serious questions um, because it has nothing to do with relaxation. Let's start right there. It's a completely misnamed thing. It's an idiotic obedience routine and nobody should teach a dog anything doing it this fashion. That's just stupid. It really is not a way to teach a dog a sit which is, I'm assuming, this is supposed somehow to accomplish. Okay. So, that was my rant. <laughs> that was my rant on this. So, relaxation protocol, really? Seriously? Wow. Okay. So, those are the three things I wanted to get off my chest. It was a rant cast today. <laughs> a rant podcast. And uh, I hope you found it entertaining because there was nothing else to get out of it. So, I hope it was entertaining. And I hope I see you again next time. Bye.